Dear Stargazer, good evening and welcome aboard Starship 28. My name is Ara, and I am pleased to have you with us tonight. In just a few moments, we will be taking off into space for a star-filled voyage. Starship 28 has been providing intergalactic travels for several years now, and so you can be assured that your journey with us will be safe and quite simply stellar. As part of tonight's itinerary, we will orbit around the Earth, visit the Moon, and pass through constellations and star systems which you will be able to see from the comfort of your sleeping quarters. All sleeping quarters on Starship 28 ensure a fully customized experience. As such, we have personalized your bed, blankets, and pillows according to your needs and taste. You have either chosen the indigo room, colored and star-studded just like our night sky, or the deepest purple room, themed after violet star clouds, which we can see in our amazing galaxy. Moreover, to ensure your complete comfort, the ambient temperature in your room follows your body heat and adjusts automatically to you. As your interstellar guide for the duration of this journey, I will be by your side to ensure that you have a celestial experience with us. It is expected that you will fall asleep as we tour the stars. It is perfectly normal as this journey is deeply relaxing for the mind and the body. As a passenger of Starship 28, your comfort is important to us and will be looked after from head to toe. And so allow me to scan through your body before taking off to the stars in order to leave any terrestrial tension behind. Now, please close your eyes. We will begin the scan. Initiated. Scanning the back of the head. Sense the weight of your head on the surface beneath you. Allow it to sink in a little deeper. Notice if your neck is long and stretched or small and bent. Allow all tension to flow out and relax your neck. Scanning the face. Allow all facial muscles to soften. Soften your forehead, your eyebrows, your eyes, your cheeks. Release your jaw and ease all muscles in your jaw. Soften your lips, your tongue, your whole mouth. Soften your entire face. Release 
Release all tension in your shoulders. Allow them to fall away into the mattress. Scanning both arms, both hands, all fingers. Allow all tension to flow out from your arms, your forearms, and your hands. Scanning the chest. Soften your chest area all the way down to your whole abdomen. Scanning the back. Relax your upper back, your mid back, and your lower back. Allow your back to sink in a little deeper into the mattress. Scanning the hips. Ease all tension from your outer hips to your buttocks. Relax your whole hip area. Scanning the legs and feet. Relax your legs from your hips down to your calves and let your feet fall to the sides limply and soften your toes and heels. Scanning outer body layer. Become aware now of your skin and all the sensations it brings to your body as it comes into contact with your covers, your clothes, and the ambient air. See if you can sink into your skin and allow yourself to be more comfortable in it. At ease and at rest. Scanning complete. Dear Stargazer, you may now cover yourself with your blankets and position yourself for a restful journey ahead as we prepare for takeoff. We are now approaching the final 10 seconds to lift off. In a few moments, we will ascend vertically into space. You may get the sense of being lifted just like when you're in an elevator. Passengers of Starship 28 usually attribute this sensation to one of lightness as the weight of all earthly concerns are left behind. The window of your sleeping quarters is only covered for takeoff, and shades will be lifted as soon as we reach outer space. This has been done for your convenience as we pick up light speed in order to escape Earth's gravity. Allow yourself to fully relax now as we begin takeoff.
Takeoff initiated. Prepare for launch. Clear for takeoff. Beginning countdown. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Starship launched. Dear Stargazer, we have taken off. I will be asking you to take a few deep breaths as we are leaving the Earth now. Take a deep breath in and fill your belly with air, making it round like the moon. And breathe out gently. Once more, deep breath in, filling your lungs with precious oxygen, and breathe out gently. One last deep breath, breathing in a full breath, full of oxygen, and breathing out gently. Return to your normal breathing pattern now. We are now in space. We have shifted from a vertical ascent to a relatively low inclination, and we will orbit once around the Earth before continuing on toward the Moon. If you'll look to your right, the shade of your window has now been lifted. Dear human, you can now enjoy the first view of your beloved blue planet. You will notice a fine blue line on its horizon. This is your atmosphere. This protective layer shields humankind from the harshness of the sun. So thin, yet it contains all the oxygen you breathe the carbon dioxide for all plant life, and it produces all of the terrestrial weather from rain to snow and storms. Earth is in fact a life-giving planet. That is why she is called Mother Earth. Humans have yet to find another planet able to sustain life. However, they are curious in nature, and perhaps one day, they will finally be able to reach other life forms. Our trajectory is now taking us over the Pacific Ocean, the largest ocean on planet Earth. For a while, there is only water to be seen. We pass Australia now, visibly brimming with lights. And now the Indian Ocean, in darkness for a while. We can now see China and Russia, and all of Europe illuminated, which seems so small from here. And now we can see Africa, 
And we can also see that there is a sandstorm occurring in the Sahara. It fades into the vast green expanse of Central Africa. We can see lights in all countries and all continents. Even from space, human life can be witnessed. We continue on to fly across the Atlantic Ocean now. And we are now over South America. You can see the chain of the Andes Mountains from here. And we pass by Central America and North America brimming with lights. And as we pass over the North Pole, you can see the Aurora Borealis tonight, also known as Northern Lights. Admire this amazing light show of emerald greens and deep fuchsia, like veils dancing over the Arctic Circle. It is now time to leave Earth's orbit and follow our trajectory to the moon. Initiating translunar injection. As we travel moonward, notice all the man-made satellites floating around Earth. Some are in high orbits, while others are lower. Over the past 50 years, countless satellites have been created and sent into space to help humans in their daily lives, from communicating with each other to monitoring weather. We are further from Earth now. Look out into the open space and notice all the particles floating by, some at terrific speed. Space is not empty as many humans tend to think. It is filled with matter, matter that is actually called space weather and is created by the sun. However, your planet is protected from space weather thanks to its powerful magnetic field. We are now approaching the moon. What you know as a bright glowing sphere looks very different from up close. You see, the moon is its own universe, rugged and gray, mysterious. Its surface has been sculpted and dented by countless asteroids over millions of years. Its highest mountain peaks dwarfs Earth's tallest mountains. The moon is devoid of any atmosphere, and because of this, there is no plant life, no animal life, no human life, no water. Without an atmosphere, Moon is subjected to extreme temperatures, reaching 120 degrees Celsius on the sunlit side and minus 120 degrees Celsius on the side we never see, the far side of the moon. What is the far side of the moon? 
It is the side humans can never see from Earth, because the moon rotates at the same rate as your planet. It is the side which always inspires fascination and mystery. No human being has ever witnessed the other side. But tonight, allow me to show you and watch as we approach. The luminosity will disappear once we have crossed over, but Starship 28 is equipped with a lighting system that can illuminate the darkest corners of space. And here we are. There are far more craters on this side. For some reason, asteroids and comets target this area more, and so the lunar surface is more rugged here, more dented. While we are here, allow me to tell you about the phases of the moon. In fact, the moon turns on her own axis over 27 days. All the while, she also orbits around the Earth for the same amount of time, 27 days. She seems completely immobile from the human eye, but you can know she is in movement by the amount of visibility. However, Regardless of her eternal rotation, half of the moon is always lighted by the sun, except in the rare moments of an eclipse. And so, when her entire illuminated self is turned toward Earth, humans can see a full moon. And as she continues her rotational dance, moon keeps regressing, gradually to a half moon, then a quarter moon, then a fine crescent, until she becomes invisible, before returning and growing once more before your eyes. This is what we call the Eternal Moon Dance. We are now going to depart from this region and head to a group of constellation which you most likely have heard of from your planet. Humans call them the Big Dipper and the Small Dipper, and some also call them the Big Bear and the Little Bear, or in Latin, Ursa Major and Ursa Minor. And you will learn why very soon. New trajectory initiated. Dear Stargazer, we are now on our way to the stars. The closest star is several light years away from the moon and earth. However, Starship 28 is equipped with a technology which allows us to visit stars at any moment and in total safety. As we plot course through space toward these constellations, you may see other star systems on the way. In fact, if you look closely by your window, you will notice pink clouds. They are intertwined with small groups of stars, also known as asterisms. We like to call them cosmic clouds, because they bring light and color 
to the dark cosmos. It is always a happy sight to see them. They can also be seen in a myriad of colors. You will notice the lavender and peach cosmic clouds a bit further ahead. Constellation destination successful. Dear Stargazer, we have now arrived and will be cruising around these constellations for a while as I tell you their story. The Big Bear and the Little Bear have been known since ancient human civilization, namely because the latter contains the Polaris, or the North Star, an amazingly bright star of great dimension, visible to humans in all of the Northern Hemisphere of Earth. This star is actually the end of the handle of the Little Dipper, so once you locate it in the sky, your eyes will naturally find the rest of this constellation. Five other stars compose this small constellation, which is in fact an asterism. The names of the other stars are Kochab, Yildun, Thirkad, Alpha al Farkadain and Anwar al Farkadain. As for the Great Dipper, it is composed of seven stars. These stars are named Alpaid, Mizar, Aliath, Megrez, Vekda, Marak, and Dube. Humans have contemplated upon the magic of the Great Dipper constellation since the beginning of time. In fact, it seems that myths surrounding this big bear in the stars go back as far as the Paleolithic era and have passed down throughout the continents, from the oral tradition of the Native Americans to the Arabian Peninsula and, of course, the great Roman and Greek empires. According to Greek mythology, the god Zeus fell in love with a nymph by the name of Callisto. Callisto had made a vow of chastity to the hunting goddess Artemis, but somehow she could not resist Zeus, and soon enough, she bore him a child by the name of Arcus. When goddess Hera, Zeus's wife, found out, she avenged herself of this betrayal by turning Callisto into a bear destined to wander the forest and hide from hunters for 15 long years. In this time, Arcus had grown into a skillful hunter and one day, Callisto in her bare version came face to face with her son who prepared to kill the bear ahead of him. Zeus, who witnessed the scene, could not allow this tragedy to occur, and so, as legend has it, the Almighty God transformed mother and son into two constellations and sent them into the sky. And this is why they are most often known as the Big Bear and the Little Bear. This is in fact one of my favorite human stories to explain the unexplainable.
dear stargazer, you are now entering the realm of dreams. We have completed our starship cruise, and when you awake, you will be in your comfortable bed, having spent a wonderful night of sleep. Thank you for journeying with us. Good night and sweet dreams.